Hey guys, so today I want to do something interesting and compare the 6.1 liter and 6.4 liter Hemi engines. I've done a video on each individually covering the fatal flaws, and I've also done a few comparison videos, like for example the 5.7 liter pre-Eagle vs. Eagle engines, and for the Hellcat vs. Red Eye engines. So I figured we could do the same for these SRT engines, getting really in depth with the information, starting with an overview of each engine, then looking at the differences of various aspects of each. Whether you're just curious like I was, or seriously considering buying either engine, hopefully the video is interesting and informative. You'll find the video outline on screen, where we'll cover things like the power output, the block, exhaust manifolds, cylinder heads, major problems, and seeing which engine is better overall. So let's begin talking about these two legendary Hemis. So first we will look at the engine specs of the 6.1 liter Hemi, which is 370 cubic inches. While the 5.7 Hemi engine was being developed and getting all the attention in the media, the SRT engineers were simultaneously working on a bigger and more powerful version. The engine first debuted in 2005 under the hood of the Chrysler 300C SRT8, and that stuck around until the end of the generation in 2010, also finding its way into the 2006-08 Dodge Magnum SRT8, 06-10 Dodge Charger and Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8, and finally the 2008-2010 Dodge Challenger SRT8. In the passenger cars that made 425 horsepower, with 420 horsepower in the Jeep, at 6200 rpm and 420 pound feet of torque at 4800 rpm in all. Now over to the 6.4 also known as the 392 for 392 cubic inches or by its codename Apache. The first production 392 Hemi was launched in the 2011 Dodge Challenger SRT8 and the 2012 Dodge Charger, Chrysler 300 and Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8s followed suit with this engine the following year. That first generation from 2011 to 2014 had an output rated at 470 horsepower and 470 pound feet of torque. From 2015 and onwards, all the 2015 to present Charger and Challenger RT scat packs and 2015 to 2018 SRT 392s came with this engine, and the output was raised to 485 horsepower and 475 pound feet of torque. The engine was also available in a lot of other vehicles, like the 2018 to present Dodge Durango SRT, the 2015 to present Chrysler 300 SRT overseas, and 2023 300C, the 2015 to present Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT the 2021 to present Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon 392, and the 2022 to present Jeep Grand Wagoneer and Wagoneer Ls. It's also worth noting that starting in 2014, some Ram trucks like the 2500 and 3500 Heavy Duties began offering a truck version of the 6.4 liter. I will not talk much at all about this truck version today, as this video is already going to be very long, but I did make an SRT vs truck comparison video, so check that out if you're interested in the top right corner. Along with the engine, the other major factor is the transmission that gets paired with it. The 6.1 liter Hemi was paired with the 5-speed Nag1 Mercedes transmission on the 300 Charger, Magnum, and Grand Cherokee, and the Challenger got that 5-speed or the option of a Tremec TR6060 6-speed manual. Until 2014, the 6.4 in the cars and SUVs were paired with the same Nag1 5-speed or the 6-speed manual in the Challenger. Starting in 2015, all the chargers and SUVs with the 6.4 liter were paired with the much improved ZF 8-speed automatic. I'll mention it here, but the 6.4s have the multi-displacement system, or MDS, which will shut off four cylinders under certain conditions to save fuel, up to 20% as Chrysler claims. And the 6.1s do not have this feature. Shifting over to performance, vehicles with the 6.1 liter Hemi were no slouch. The officially released performance times will vary based on the vehicle, but typically these cars could do 0-60 to 60 in between 4.7 to 5 seconds and the quarter mile in 13.2 to 13.4 seconds. The Grand Cherokee SRT8 was quicker to 60, doing it in 4.4 seconds thanks to the all-wheel drive getting it off the line faster. Vehicles with the 6.4 liter Hemi are quite a bit quicker, but again it varies depending on the year, as some things like the transmission can make a big difference. The first gen of the 6.4s for the cars saw 0-60 to times around 4.4 seconds, and a quarter mile around 12.9 seconds, so that's roughly half a second faster for both over the 6.1 liters. More recent Scat Pack models have 0-60 to times between 3.9 to 4.2 seconds, with 12.5 to 12.6 second quarter miles, so there you're looking at around 1 second faster than a stock 6.1, thanks in part to the 8-speed transmissions. The Durango and Grand Cherokee have similar times to the cars, 
So it seems like the increase in the weight and the all-wheel drive will kind of cancel each other out. Another key aspect would be fuel. The 6.1 liter requires premium 91 octane or higher. Gas mileage is rated at roughly 13 city, 19 highway, and 15 MPG overall for the four-door models, 14 city and 22 highway for the Challenger, and 11 city, 13 highway for the Grand Cherokee. The 6.4 also needs premium fuel, but the gas mileage has greatly improved. The car models are rated around 15 city, 24 highway, and 18 MPG overall with the 8-speed, and bump all those figures down by 1 MPG with the 5-speed. So that's a solid improvement of 15.4% in the city, 26.3% on the highway, and 20% overall when compared to the 6.1. The SUVs like the Grand Cherokee also improved to 12 city, 18 highway with the 5-speed, or 13 city, 19 highway with the 8-speed. So alongside that 8-speed transmission, the main reason for the better efficiency would be the MDS feature, especially on the highway. Next we move on to the engine block. The 6.1 is based on the 5.7 liter, but the cylinders have been bored out an additional 3.5 millimeters to get the increased displacement. That means a 4.055 inch bore and 3.579 inch stroke. The engine speed increases here to 6400 RPMs. The 6.1 blocks are cast iron and painted in Hemi orange. While that does pay homage to the iconic 426 Hemi engine, its main function was to help differentiate 5.7 and 6.1 blocks during assembly at the Saltillo engine plant. These blocks also have 6.1 liter casts on the driver's side of the block above the oil pan rail. The 6.4 blocks have a 4.09 inch bore and 3.72 inch stroke, with the 6.4 liter writing cast above the oil pan rail. Just like the 6.1, the blocks on the cars and SUVs are painted in orange and machined and assembled at FCA Saltillo engine plant in Mexico. The truck blocks are painted black instead, so that's an easy way to tell the difference. The trucks also got a thicker block known as the Big Gas Engine or BGE, and either BG or BGE was cast on the side or back of the block. Chrysler began quietly using these in all the 6.4 powered vehicles in 2017 and 2018 because they're stronger with better casting and increased cylinder wall strength. Now we move to the camshaft and cylinder heads. On the 6.1, the camshaft is a billet steel design with a higher lift than the 5.7 liter cam, up to 0.571 inches and you can find the other specs on screen. As for the cylinder heads, like all the Gen 3 Hemis, they're made from aluminum with a twin plug design, featuring ports designed with larger cross-sectional areas. As a result, these heads would show 11% more flow in the intake and 13% more flow in the exhaust ports over the 5.7. The 16 hollow stem valves on both the intake and the exhaust side are larger in diameter than the 5.7 liter, so 2.08 inches for the intake valve head diameter and 1.6 inches for the exhaust valves. For the 6.4, I'll post the camshaft specs on screen for the cars and SUVs. The truck applications do have a different camshaft and part number entirely. One of the major improvements on the 6.4 Hemi, of course, is the addition of variable camshaft timing. So this will change the valve timing by rotating the camshaft slightly from its initial orientation, and that results in the camshaft timing being advanced or reduced. And then the PCM adjusts the camshaft timing depending on certain factors like engine load and RPM. So overall, it allows for more optimum engine performance, reduced emissions, and increased fuel efficiency when compared to engines with fixed camshafts like the 6.1 liter Hemi has. These Hemis use an aluminum twin plug cylinder head, but it improves on the past 6.1 liter Hemi with larger valve sizes and upgraded port and chamber designs. So because of the improvements, bigger valves are able to be used with an intake valve diameter of 2.14 inches and exhaust valve diameter of 1.65 inches. As for the rotating assembly, the 6.1 has a forged steel crankshaft for better strength and stiffness and uses hyperutectic pistons with a floating pin design. The pistons are 4.055 inches in diameter and weigh 435 grams, and the connecting rods measure 6.242 inches center line to center line in length. These pistons have a flat top surface. Four double oil jets have been attached to the base of the main oil galley to cool the pistons. Also, the stock compression ratio is 10.2 to 1. The 6.4 Hemi also has a crankshaft made of forged steel. Like the 6.1, this engine also uses hyperutectic pistons. There are oil squirters to reduce heat and a floating pin design that's attached to a powdered metal I-beam connecting rod. And the 6.4 truck piston design is a bit different. In the cars and SUVs, the compression ratio is 10.9 to 1. The length of the rod here is the same as the Hellcat and Hellcat Red Eye engines, 6.2 inches. Moving on to intake and exhaust. 
The 6.1 Hemi at the time got a new larger high flow aluminum intake manifold that was designed with longer and larger diameter runners that provided the SRT8 with increased flow at higher RPM. The intake manifold is barrel shaped with a long fixed runner. Interestingly, the 6.1 liter Hemi engine is also the last production Chrysler V8 to have a factory installed aluminum intake manifold. Chrysler added an exhaust manifold with a true header design with steel tubes for each cylinder encased in a stainless steel shell. Headers will reduce the exhaust pressure buildup by creating a low pressure area at high RPM, so that improves the flow of exhaust gases. And the addition of those headers resulted in a 12 horsepower gain over the stock cast manifolds on the 5.7. These engines also used an 80 millimeter throttle body. And the exhaust system used here is 2.75 inch dual pipes. As for the 6.4, the intake manifold here was a big change from the previous 6.1. While that engine had an aluminum long runner intake manifold, the 392 in the passenger cars uses an active intake manifold that's made from black composite plastic. But the one thing it doesn't have is that visual effect, like the cast aluminum on the old SRTs. By that I mean that that aluminum manifold just looked better. But the 6.4 manifold does have an upgrade as it has an active runner feature that electronically varies the intake manifold's runner length for optimal horsepower and torque. So essentially what you have here is an intake with two different routing paths for air, shorter or longer. And by having this dual path intake, you can then tune the intake to be effective over the entire power band. To show how this active intake manifold works, the picture above shows the switch closed so the incoming air takes the long path around the runner, which is better for low to mid-end torque. And the bottom shows the switch open, so the incoming air takes a shortcut from the center area, reducing the airflow restriction, which is better for top end power. And to help get that air in, there's a front feed 45 degree side mounted 80 millimeter throttle body. As for the exhaust manifolds, this engine uses a tubular free flowing exhaust manifold that's similar to shorty headers. And the exhaust system used is the same diameter as the 6.1 with 2.75 inch piping. One important note is that the Grand Cherokee and Durango models have a more restrictive cast iron exhaust manifold design due to the all-wheel drive drivetrain of those SUVs, so that's why the engine output is slightly reduced to 475 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. Another thing I wanted to look at was the production numbers for each engine. The 6.1 is quite rare as Chrysler only ever produced 83,839 vehicles with that Hemi. The 6.4 production numbers are incomplete, but I have them from 2011 to 2018, where there were 107,028 vehicles with the 6.4 Hemi produced. Now we can add another 5 calendar years to that from 2019 through 2023, with even more vehicles like the Jeep Grand Wagoneer and Rubicon 392, and that also doesn't include any of the trucks, so there's probably well over 200,000 of these engines produced in total when all is said and done. The final thing to cover today would be the major flaws of each engine. I won't be going into anything in extreme detail here as I cover all the nitty gritty details in my major flaws video for each engine. But both engines suffer from the same major flaw which would be lifter roller failure. The lifter bearing seizes up and the roller doesn't function properly which causes a ticking noise. To describe the issue, the roller bearings in the lifter roller fail, these are also called needle bearings, and that causes the roller to seize and end up sliding or tapping on the cam lobe rather than rolling as it should. Another way of saying it is that the lifters are faulty and they can stick or get stuck, and that stuck lifter then wears down the camshaft lobes and eats into the cam. The lobes will get worn down far enough to the point that the valves don't open enough anymore, and you'll get a cylinder misfire. To go just a bit further into the explanation, inside the roller there are needle bearings which you can see on screen. These needle bearings wear out the supporting pin through them, so the surface of the roller lifter has too much play and up and down movement. 
That causes more needle bearing damage and they will eventually fail and drop down far enough that the sides of the bearing will contact the cam lobes as the roller partially recesses into itself. This issue will require lifters and camshaft replacement, about a four to $5,000 job at a dealership. And this seems to affect pretty much all the naturally aspirated Hemis, including the 5.7, 6.1, and 6.4, but it doesn't really seem to happen all that often on the 6.1 Hemi. There are many more reports online and also in engine shops that I've been associated with regarding the 6.4 liter, but part of the reasoning for that could be a numbers game. As we discussed, there are more 6.4 liter Hemis made than there are 6.1s. The other issue, it's not really a flaw, but I still wanted to just discuss it, would be that both the engines are not reliable with boost with the stock internals. You'll have to forge them. So this could be a problem for some who look for ways to upgrade their vehicles and achieve quicker and faster performance times, and usually going with forced induction systems is a popular option there. So on both, the rods and pistons are unable to withstand a lot of boost safely, with the weak point being the hyper-eutectic pistons that both the engines have stock. So if you go above a moderate boost, so let's say above 5 to 6 PSI, the engine will become a ticking time bomb. Finally, if you ask me to choose which engine was better, it's a tough call. The 6.4 has better performance every day of the week, even if you have the 5-speed auto, but with the 8-speed, you are around 1 second faster both 0-60 to 60 and in the quarter mile, which is a big improvement over the 6.1. In terms of reliability, they are both pretty solid and can last well over 100 to 200,000 miles, but I'd give the slight edge to the 6.1, as you do see the roller lifter issue pop up on the 6.4s a little too often for my liking. The 6.1 to me seems like it's more bulletproof, but that's just my opinion. Both are definitely a lot of fun and very powerful for a stock, naturally aspirated V8. So that's the end of this video. Hopefully you enjoyed going super in-depth on both of the 6.1 and 6.4 liter Hemi V8 motors. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.